Okay. Hey, let's get started. I'm super excited to share interview insights today and hopefully uh, get some get some you know direct coaching with um, your specific uh, situation. Uh, but first I want to start with this. Uh, the idea of an interview is can be so intimidating to people and and I totally get that. It's a little bit like taking a test, right? Some people are great test takers and other people, uh, just freeze up and find that taking a test, even though they have all of that knowledge in their brain, um, is kind of difficult. So, you know, interviewing can feel a little bit like the same way. Uh, oops, I'm going to admit a couple more people here. Okay. Um, so, uh, if interviewing feels like taking a test that you can never pass, um, I want to help you reframe this a little bit so that you can feel like this is something that you can do um, and that you can get better results out of your out of your interview process so think of it like this think of it as a conversation first of all it really is just a conversation between two people who ultimately want the same thing you actually have similar interests, right? Because whether you're in tech or you're a graphic designer, whatever the role is requiring, this person is hiring for the role. So at some level, if you look at it as interest, you both have the same interest. Um, you both want the same thing. So you going in, it's you can think of it as not that you're not talking with a complete stranger, you're talking with someone who likes the same things you do. And if you were to meet that person at um, a holiday party or some other event and you found out that you both like the same things, then it would be really easy and natural to engage that person in a conversation. So I want you to first think of the interview from that perspective. The next thing is I also want you to trust yourself. That's a really big factor in how doing well in an interview is instead of going in second guessing yourself wondering do i have all the right information have i prepared all the right stuff uh what, it, what all the what ifs that come into your mind is if you go in trusting yourself that you're applying for this role for a reason you're very qualified to do it and that you can trust your own brain to serve you and come up with the answers that you need in the moment so how do you do that? Well, if you have been following me at all, if we've coached together before, um, you know that one of my big things is preparing your mind by cleaning it out first. So before you even go into the interview, I want you to spend a little time and preferably do this as close to the interview as possible um, because we're going to clean out your brain. And if you have too much space between uh, sweeping, you know, <laughs> sweeping it out with well, the dust, the dust bunnies come back in. So sweep out your brain, clean out your brain as close to the interview as possible by first doing what I call a doubt download. So all of the crazy things that your brain is telling you, um, who am I to apply for this job? Oh my gosh, I hate interviewing. Um, I don't know if I've prepared enough. Uh, you feel like you've crammed for a test. I know some of my clients who do the technical coding interviews, um, I feel for you. You know, you're doing so much preparation for that. But just remember that, you know, all of those weird thoughts that come into your mind are drama that are not serving you in the moment. So get them all out on paper. And um, for some of us who like to believe in uh, positive affirmations and having a positive mental attitude, Sometimes we'll even judge those comments like, well, well I'm not going to write that down because that's not a very helpful thought. And you judge it and you decide to um, edit it out because it's you shouldn't be thinking that way. Well, the fact is you are thinking that way. That's fine. That's normal. Just get it all out on paper. Next, I want you to rank yourself on how much you feel aligned to the role. And I want you to rank yourself one to 10. This isn't about, well, I am a six because I should have taken that course or I don't have, I don't quite have that knowledge. 
no, I, if you feel like a 10, whatever you feel like, go with that number. But this isn't about filling in the gaps. Getting yourself from a six to a 10 is your thoughts. So if you have ranked yourself a six, what would you need to think about yourself to feel like a 10? So this isn't making up for lost ground. This is what thoughts would I have to have about myself to feel like a 10 in this role and write some of those things down. A great way to do that is the next step and that is start paying attention to your accomplishments. We have really great brain physiology. And this is when you think of an accomplishment, you do a couple things. Number one, you feel good. So when you feel good, you're actually turning on chemicals in your brain that help you get to higher levels of critical thinking. And in an interview, you need to be running on as high a level critical thinking as possible because that is what's gonna help you remember what you need to remember, um, start that conversation, do whatever you need to do. Um, so keep that in mind. You want to be at higher levels of critical thinking. Um, and when you think of an accomplishment and you write it out in detail, then you start to feel great and you start to remember why you have value and why this role is perfect for you. Um, so keep that in mind. Now, after you create an initial accomplishment and this accomplishment, this first one, I don't care if it has to do with a job or not, I just want you to feel great. So if thinking about something you accomplished in your personal life, in, uh, improves that thought process and starts to make you feel good and turns on those chemicals for higher levels of critical thinking, then go with that one. After that initial one, while you're at that higher level, now you can start thinking of accomplishments that you have, get the job description beside you, and then start looking at those job description bullet points. I call them pain points because all of those things exist because some problem needs to be solved in the business. So when you're looking at the pain points and you're thinking, well, I, am, I, I can solve that. Here's my experience. Now you start thinking about accomplishments and experiences that you have that are aligned to those bullet points um, in the job description. And now you're feeding your brain. You're filling up all that clean space. You cleaned it all the crap. Now you're filling it up with the things about you that reinforce and give you evidence of why this role is right for you. And you do this again, like I said, as close to the interview as possible so that you're going right into it, feeling a sense of ease, feeling a sense of certainty, feeling a sense of, of empowerment that you are, you are the perfect candidate for this role. So, um, and after the interview, I want you to immediately after the interview, I want you to do a evaluation. And this is going to help you clarify uh, a few things about the interview you just had, but most importantly, it's actually going to help you improve interview upon interview upon interview. So, when you're going through a process for most companies, they have your, you know, it be, wouldn't it be so nice if it was one and done, right? You walk in, you do an interview. Great. I'll call you. I had one of those one time. It was really awesome. Um, by the time I got home from a three hour drive for the interview, I had a voicemail on my answering machine. We don't do that anymore. There's lots about the process. So I want every interview, whether it's a second interview or a third interview or a brand new phone screen with somebody new, I want the, you to get better and better and better with each interview. And the way you do that is evaluating each one. So as soon as you get off the phone or off the Zoom meeting or walk out the door, I want you to do an evaluation of what worked, what didn't work, and what would you do differently. We start with what worked for the same reason that I suggested that you start with an accomplishment in your prep. If you're thinking about what worked, you're going to be have more clarity and you're going to be more objective 
about what didn't work and what you would do differently. And so instead of beating yourself up as soon as you walk out the door or as soon as you hop off the call, um, talk about what worked. What did you really like about the situation and really about what you did? Because that's all you can control. You can't control the other person's response, but you can talk, think about and write out what you did well. Maybe you really liked a certain answer. Maybe you felt like you got a really good um, connection with somebody. Maybe you found something personal that you had in common and that created that instant connection. Then, then write that out. Um, everything you can think of that worked. And then get into what didn't work. Well, maybe it was you wish you would have um, had an answer to this or maybe you wish you would have remembered this other example. That's okay. If you write it out and you recall it, then it'll make it easier for you to incorporate that in your next interview. And then lastly, what would you do differently? This is a process that we do in, in project management in many roles because we want to just keep duplicating what worked and what didn't work. We wanna leave that behind and we wanna tweak it and pivot and improve with, with every single uh, process. And an interview is just a process. So make sure that you talk about what you would wanna do differently and then boom, you're done. You can close that up. You don't have to reread that because it is associated with the past. And now with everyone in the future, you just keep going through the same process. Uh, trust me, it will make a difference. I want you to trust yourself that you know what you're talking about, that you have are applying for that role for a reason. 60% um, qualified is what I suggest because the other 40% is going to be made up of transferable skills of things that you know how to do that you just haven't done yet because it's never been required of you. So with that 60%, of why you applied for the job and this preparation, um, you will do better and trust yourself. We'll repeat it again. Trust yourself that you will recall what you need to recall in the interview. That was such a great call that we had on Zoom. And if you're listening now, I hope that you found value in what I just shared, because here's the deal. I want you to go into every single interview with a sense of ease and certainty. Because when you do that, you're giving confidence to the other person. You're transferring your sense of ease and certainty to them, which means they will see you as the best candidate for the role. If you need help, one of the free services I always offer is Interview Insights Calls. We'll spend up to 30 minutes together. Uh, you can share your specific situation with me and I will help you come up with a game plan to get better results in your next interview. If you need more help than that, then you may want to join my job search strategy coaching program. The clients who are implementing what I'm teaching them are landing roles in as little as 30 days and usually within 60 days. That can be you too. It's not hard work. It's actionable. We'll get it all together. We'll customize it to you and you will get better results as well. So if any of this is of interest, then connect with me, reach out to me anywhere that we're connected and let's figure out how to make that happen. All right, take care.